After 20 years of service, Go Transit entered the 1990s looking for a new upgrade to their aging locomotive roster, which was reaching the end of its service life. Go Transit wanted a modern locomotive with suitable pulling power to boot. Their experiments with older freight-focused locomotives like the GP40TC and F40PH proved to be unsuccessful. The decision was made to team up with General Motors to develop the F59PH to provide a new wave of commuter service. Go Transit moved to purchase 49 total units delivered in three sets or three phases. The locomotive would prove to be less than reliable than hopeful. Even after a rebuilding program, Go Transit would eventually have to provide more than two locomotives to combat weekend commuter engine failures. Go Transit would eventually sell off the majority of its F59PH fleet rather quickly to other commuters around the United States and Canada. Rapido announced the pre-order for the F59PH in December of 2019, and dealers took delivery in April of 2020. Obviously, Go Transit is the flagship model of this release, with the Phase 1 and Phase 2 models being offered, as well as the Special Edition logo. Other road names include AMT, Trinity Railway Express, Metra, and Metrolink. A total of 9 paint schemes with several road numbers give a total of 27 units, as well as some unnumbered units to expand the fleets even more. The model that we will be taking a look at today is Metro 97, one of the three units initially purchased by the Chicago-based commuter line in 2015. The unit was originally sent to Go Transit and was built in November of 1988. It spent several years on the AMT before being rebuilt in the NS Juniata shops. Metro made several smaller modifications like removing marker lights, installing the gyro light, and in-cab control indicators more in line with other Metro locomotives. The model is fitted with DCC and ESU lock sound, which has an MSRP of $335. The locomotive was purchased locally for a discounted price of $255. Checking out the details on the front of the locomotive, the first of these details is the LED gyro light mounted on top of the brow. This is one of the details added to the Metro locomotives during the rebuild process. Other brands like the Go Transit equipment are suited with emergency lights or strobe lights. The Metro Gyrolite is fitted with an LED bright white in color. On either side of the Gyrolite is a separately applied metal grab irons painted white to match the color of the brow. Just below the brow is the distinct three-piece window set similar to those found on other EMD 60 series locomotives. The windows are fitted with etched metal windshield wipers as well. The nose of the locomotive is fitted with several details as well, including some of those are the two sandfill hatches, plating with rivet details, and separately applied metal grab irons. Moving down the nose of the locomotive, one of the details that was updated after the move to Metro was the removal of the class lights and updated to the red marker lights. These two red LED lights are on the nose and help show the end of the train during push and pull commuter service. Just below each marker light is the LED backlit number boards. These LEDs are in the gold and white color. The other main lighting feature on the nose is the dual bulb LED headlight, this one is also in the gold and white color, matching most of the other LED functions on the front of the locomotive. The lower half of the front of the locomotive is also packed with details on this brand new model. On the front of the locomotive is the front handrails painted white, and while the stanchions are made of plastic, the grab iron portion is made from wire and is thus quite strong. Underneath the anti-climber is a various assortment of HEP and MU receptacles. The two MU receptacles are located immediately under the anti-climber, with the black and orange tipped receptacles. The head and power receptacles are located just under those and include the red cable connectors. On either side of those cable connectors are the LED ditch lights in the gold and white color mounted to the front sill. More of the standard locomotive features include separately applied details like the coupler cut bar, the front snow plow, and the air hoses. Details like the air hoses and train line air hoses include accent painting with the silver tipped where the glad hands would meet. One of the newer upgrades from Rapido is the rollout of their metal coupler, and while not a scale coupler, the design looks very familiar and follows the designs of the KD No. 5. Moving towards the side of the locomotive gives a good opportunity to check out the side profile of the EMD safety cab. Starting off at the top of the side of the cab is the sun shades made of the etched metal components. These are separately applied pieces with enough tension to allow the owner to reposition the sun shades based off their preference. Just below the sunshades are the side cab windows that are tinted to match the prototype. On other units, the outer trim pieces are painted silver like the Metrolink units, but on this Metro locomotive, the outer trim pieces are painted black to match the overall body paint scheme. Another separately applied piece is the metal wind deflector and side mirror mounted just after the first window. 
Leading down the front steps is the metal grab iron, the separately applied piece connected just under the number boards and moves down toward the side steps. All the side steps are separately applied photo etched pieces painted in black color with white accent painting on the edge for personal safety. The back sides of the steps are finished in a yellow color for additional visual safety on the real locomotive. Underneath the top step is a side step lighting housing and the actual LED is mounted inside the housing. This detail turns on with track power and can be found on all four side steps around the locomotive. The trucks are detailed to the level that is expected from Rapido with several separately applied detail components like the brake piston and metal wire for the brake plumbing. The trucks feature molded on lettering to match the EMD Bloomberg style trucks found on the prototype. One of the more interesting features on this specific side of the front truck is the speed recorder attached to the front axle and how it is attached to the body. The recorder is attached to the axle cap, but the wire is tucked up into the nose such that when the front axle pivots or moves, the speed recorder seems to disappear seamlessly into the body. Overall, a very minute detail executed very well. Like other EMD passenger-based locomotives, the F59PH is a full cowl unit and there are no side walkways. This is similar to classic favorites like the F40PH and thus a lot of the side features are similar to its predecessor. One of the most standout features across the car body side is the different intake louvers along the top. The first of these is the traction motor blower. This separately applied detail is a photo etched piece and is slightly different grill style from the others with only the vertical slots. The next intake grill is the dynamic brake blower, which you guessed it, cools the dynamic brake mechanics. This piece is molded in the car body, but looks very nicely done and is hard to differentiate from the etched metal components. Between the two intake grills are a separately applied metal grab iron with the white accent painting for better prototype visibility. Moving closer towards the ground, another one of the awesome lighting features is the ground lights that turn on with the track power. These gold and white LEDs are mounted under the sill and allow the real life engineers to see the trucks in ground while operating in low light and speed conditions. Working the way towards the rear, the fuel tank is also littered with the classic locomotive details. Details like the fuel filler port, Fuel gauge sight glass and emergency fuel cutoff switches are all molded off onto the fuel tank and are clearly recognizable by the red accent painting. Just behind the fuel tanks are the two train line air receivers. These are nicely done with several air plumbing details connecting the various components. One of the better looking lines is the corrugated hose that looks fantastic despite the HO size scaling. The last two intake grills are towards the rear of the locomotive with the inner two roof fans for the prime mover radiator cooling and the associated radiator intake grills, while the fan all the way in the back is for the HEP generator. Both of these intake grills are more of these slot and drilled hole styles intakes compared to the vertical slots seen earlier. The grills both feature complex paint jobs with the silver and black dual paint job on the radiators and the orange and red metro wings on the HEP grills. Similar to the first grill, the radiator and HEP grills are separately applied photo etched brass components. The rear of the locomotive is packed full of details as well. The first of these is the inertia filter hood. This hood prevents debris from damaging the intake grills to the HEP generator. This hood did arrive detached from the model on both the units that I purchased, but I was able to easily glue the components back into place. Just to the right of the inertia filter is the dual rear lights fitted with the warm white LEDs. Similar to the F40PH, Rapido has set this light to prototypical standards and thus the rear light does not automatically illuminate when zero is selected in reverse. Instead, it must be manually turned on. The other lighting feature on the rear is the rear class lights underneath the locomotive numbers on either side. These are both LED lights as well with a red lens to get off the red light color. On the other side of the rear light is the separately applied metal grab iron ladder on the left side of the rear hood. These are painted white, similar to the grab irons found on the front of the locomotive. Off to the sides of the rear are the two sandfill hatches. On the F59, the sandfill hatches offer a slight change in design with the indents to the rear car body. Just below the sill is more of the standard rear locomotive details. Locomotive communication cable receptacles for MUing locomotives are by the anti-climber with the black and orange receptacles. HEP, which provides the 480 volt power to the commuter cars, are in the red cable connectors. All the power receptacles are molded into the chassis but are nicely done. The separately applied coupler cut bar is just below the power receptacles and is molded in all plastic. Similar to the cut bar on the locomotive, air hoses molded into the plastic 
are separately applied on the end sill. While the engineer side of the locomotive is relatively the same as the conductor side, there are a few minor differences to point out across the model. The first detail to point out isn't exclusive to the engineer side, but while we have a close-up of the rear, it's a good chance to take a look at the jacking pads. The main reason for the close-up shots is the brake chain, which on the model is using a real scaled chain on the rear truck. The chain does seem to be slightly oversized, but the effect still looks great and really takes this model to the next level. Just in front of the rear truck is the majority of the air system components. Obviously, the main features are the two main receiver tanks as well as the piping connecting all the components. Other features like the dryers and spitter valves can also be easily viewed from this vantage point. On the fuel tank is another array of details. The large square compartment attached to the main fuel tank is the waste retention tank. Details on the fuel tank include the emergency fuel shutoff switch, fuel level sight glass, fuel filler port, and radial fuel level gauge. Most of these components are painted in either a red or silver accent painting. The main difference between the two car body sides is the engine compartment door located on the engineer's side. This access door features long style metal grab irons on either side of the door, as well as the steps leading up to the fuel tank. Similar to other steps found across the model, this access door also features an individual light for personnel safety. The tops of these models are also littered with details and for good reason as modelers this is generally the most seen aspect of the locomotives. Starting on the brow of the locomotive the first set of the two different Sinclair antennas can be seen. Just behind the first antenna is the dual set of RV style AC conditioning units. On the metro units the AC units are painted black but other units like the Go Transit feature white units as well. For this metro this is one of the best ways to narrow or broaden your specific modeling era. The next compartment is just above the traction motor blower and features good detail hatch above. The hatch features etched metal lift rings, a feature found throughout the top of the model. Behind that is the engine exhaust silencer module with the Nathan K5LA horn just behind the exhaust. After the horn is a set of four total fans in three separate cooling banks. The first of these is for the dynamic brake components. The middle two fans are for the main radiator cooling and the last fan is for the HEP generator. All of these fans feature plastic grill components as well as fan blade details under the grills. The fan modules also include lift ring details for the overall modules and the fan modules themselves have brass lift ring details as well. The body of the model isn't normally attached to the chassis using coupler box screws but rather plastic latches similar to Kato models. Because of this it is advised to carry the model by the fuel tank instead of gripping it by the car body sides. The body can be removed by removing the four corner grab irons at either side of the body of the chassis and then spreading the body apart and gently pulling the chassis from under the body. It is advised to be extremely careful as there is many details to damage during this process and I would not recommend to remove the body unless absolutely necessary. The chassis is made of die cast metal and provides the support for the rest of the model. The model is pretty good weight for a shorter wheelbase locomotive and this is no doubt attributed to the die cast chassis. The five pole skew wound motor is nested into the chassis and is completely covered up by the rest of the electronics. All the wheels pick up power and provide tractive force back to the rails. With all the numerous lighting features across the model, the locomotive does feature a pin and contact system to transfer the power to the gyro light and allows the body to be completely detachable from the chassis. The ESU Locksound V5 21 pin decoder is situated in the middle of the chassis with a lighting distribution board separating the board from the motor. To disperse the sound from that ESU decoder is two iPhone speakers. These have a one piece sound enclosure to really give a good bassy sound to really hear the ESU sound decoder. Now we'll go ahead and apply track power and check out the sights and sounds of the F59 PH.
The operation of the F-59PH is fairly standard with the ESU Loxon V5 rolling out approximately a year ago, and the majority of people are familiar with the features. Like other passenger D-cells Rapido has released, the standard DCC functions allow a lot of variability with the HEP generator. One of the most interesting features was the F4, or the drive hold, which basically allows the locomotive to coast down from higher speeds, and thus the momentum is also increased as well. Several of the sound features also include classic Rapido humor that are easter egged into the higher functions of the decoder. The locomotive weighed in at 17.3 ounces or 490 grams, slightly heavier than the F40 counterpart. When hooked up to the force gauge, three tests were conducted and an average was taken from these. The average was found to be 3.83 ounces or approximately 109 grams. This should be able to pull somewhere around 40 to 45 standard freight cars or about 15 plus passenger cars, enough for an entire Metro Consist. The locomotive was equipped with Rapido metal couplers and it was found that both the couplers were slightly low. Moving on to the scoring section, the different scoring categories are shown with their respective point values. The model will be scored off these categories and then given a final score in a subsequent letter grade. The packaging is pretty standard Rapido packaging with the hard plastic outer shell and soft plastic inner liner. One of the best aspects is the manual, which is based off the original EMD manual from the F50P9. And of course, this is always worth read as the manual is scattered with Rapido humor. Overall, a full five points. The models are fairly accurate to the prototype with only some minor issues. Metro got these units in 2015 and then they were rebuilt in 2019 with some major cosmetic changes. Based off the rebuilding photos, the models are most accurate from 2015 to right before the rebuilding. From comparing the 97 and 99 units, there appears to be no major differences between the two models. For Metro 97, there are two major discrepancies. The first of these is the AC unit. The original 97 unit was installed with orange AC units, and then after the rebuild, it was fitted with the white AC units that were almost immediately turned black from all the road grime. The coupler cut bars were a different style, and it seems like other models, like the 99 unit, had white accent painting on the handle portions. Both of these aren't a huge issue, but definitely a missed opportunity for Rapido. The paint on the model was applied well, with all the decals being finely printed and very crisp. Generally, the paint lines were very sharp, but there was some fuzziness on the Metro wings. One of the larger issues I noted was the fade on the Metra seemed to be pretty off. Really, the silver background should extend through the side of the Metra logo under the cab windows, and that's not the case on the model. The issue is a little bit more pronounced after rebuilds, but that's out of this model's era-specific unit. And while I think it is fairly difficult effect to achieve, in opinion, it looks okay, not great. The other thought I had on the paint was that the orange seems quite a bit off. I'm not sure if the orange is the official paint sample or based off photos, but every photo I saw, it seemed way too light and overall just not a good choice. So for those two minor issues, I did take away two points. Overall, the details on the model were fairly well done. After purchasing the F40 for the first time earlier this year, I immediately became concerned that this model would have a lot of the same detail issues I explained in the F40 video. However, I was pleasantly surprised when the model came through with a lot of new tooling as well as a good number of separately applied details and metal components. This model would be absolutely perfect if it came with the animated roller bearing caps, but we'll still have to wait for that detail to debut on a Rapido release. The ESU lock sound is one of the main selling features of this locomotive and generally the lighting really helps as well. Rapido did a great job on the lighting with the Metro specific lighting like the gyro light and other F59 PH details like the step lights and inspection lights. I had no complaints with the sounds as ESU provides a great product and the dual speakers really pump out great sound. The only minor issues was with the lights is that the ditch lights are significantly brighter than the headlight and require a lot of CV tweaking to fix and the gyro light is the only light feature in the cool white LED where it really should have been the golden white to match the others. Honestly, just a little bit of a weird choice on the gyro light. Similar to other Rapido products, the lack of a super capacitor is also a little disappointing on an otherwise extremely well-built model. As mentioned before, all the metal wheels pick up power and provide tractive force to the rails. The metal wheels were all found to be engaged using the KD height gauge. The EMD Bloomberg trucks were also very nicely detailed with good molded on details, as well as several separately applied details to give a good effect. The locomotive is fitted with the new Rapido standard size metal couplers. And while a scale coupler would have been a nice feature on this expensive a model, the metal coupler is still good. 
Both couplers were found low, and thus two points were taken away. Overall, the value I thought was to be pretty fair. The MSRP is obviously high at 335 but the locomotive could have been found in several shops for mid-200s, right with other premium DCC sound locomotives. That being said, this model is missing a few of the more premium details that other manufacturers have included for a few years now, and it's a little disappointing to have a newly released and tooled model missing some of these features. As mentioned in the value section, overall the value of the model is super good, but just barely missing the mark in a few categories, so I gave it a 9 out of 10 for the miscellaneous section. Adding up the totals gives an 88 out of 100 or a B letter grade, and when comparing this model to other recently reviewed locomotives, it winds up 8th on the list, one spot above the older F40 PH model. All in all, this is a very nice model, and modelers across North America are once again very lucky to have a relatively low population locomotive to be produced with such high details and performance from a company such as Rapido. In general, I don't think there was one major issue with the locomotive, just a bunch of smaller issues that slowly add up points. The biggest complaint I probably have about this model is the issues with the paint job and the lack of a super capacitor. Adding those two back into the equation and the Rapido F59PH is fighting for the top spot with the others. Overall, I was very happy with my model. Enough so that I went ahead and purchased the 97 unit. I went out and bought the 99 unit. I really need Rapido to start making the stainless steel commuter metro cars as the full length trains of the XCNW commuters are not looking very prototypical with the contemporary F59 PHs. That's all I got for this review. Let me know what you guys think about the metro example or the other examples that were released in this like the Metrolink or the Go Transit. I know a lot of these are going to be looking awesome pulling the bi-level commuter cars that are supposed to be released in late summer 2022. With that, Comment, rate, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.